I'm Rachel Conrad for 2 TV. We are pleased to present our full-length documentary on the CSS Chattahoochee. I saw the Gumby Shell, the elemental set, then for the captain's show, let us go home, oh, let us go home, oh, let us go home, to see my darling, oh, let us go home. Captain, the mate got drunk, break up the people's tongue, Stole all the people's junk, let it go home. Oh, let it go home. Oh, let it go home. She is my darling. Oh, let it go home. The gunboat CSS Chattahoochee sank at Bluntstown during a severe storm on May 27, 1863. It was Florida's greatest naval tragedy of the war between the states, or Civil War. The Chattahoochee, named for the river on which she was built, was a powerful warship. She had been launched at Saffold, Georgia on January 1, 1863. The story of the ship began with the river itself. Most people in the South actually traveled by river back then. So their thinking is, you know, this is their major highway. So how do we protect that from, from the Union Navy coming up the Chattahoochee River? So there's the idea behind it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Johnston ran into the same problems that the rest of the Confederacy is running into. That's manpower, knowledgeable shipbuilders, resources of all kinds, and eventually the Confederate Navy takes over uh, and finishes the construction on the gunboat, and it becomes an integral part of the Chattahoochee River Squadron. As the South fielded armies for its fight against the United States government, there was also a dramatic need for supplies and weapons of war. Columbus turns into the second most important industrial site in the entire Confederacy. They're building steam engines at the ironworks here. In fact, much of the machinery for the Chattahoochee is built here in Columbus. And that's just a small portion of what they're doing here. They're making uniforms, they're producing small arms. It is a tremendous military industrial complex here. So that's the real importance of Columbus and that's why it's, it's, there's such a focus on protecting Columbus. CSS Chattahoochee, it was an amazing vessel. Uh, it's a little known warship of this war between the states or Civil War time period, but it was remarkable that they actually built this thing the builders had no prior shipbuilding experience. They built it out of green pine timber. Uh, they built this ship on the uh, deep in the lowlands and swamps of the Chattahoochee River in southwest Georgia. They got the thing operational. Uh, it steamed down the Apalachicola River several times. They steamed it up to Bainbridge. This boat was 130 feet long. It had a crew of over 100 men, and it was mounted with six pieces of heavy artillery. Uh, it was the most powerful warship ever afloat on the Apalachicola, Chattahoochee, and Flint River system. One of the most interesting things about it is that it's a hybrid. It's a, it's a combination sail and steam vessel. So it's a, it's a good technological idea for us to grasp hold of in talking about what life was like on the Chattahoochee River in the mid-19th century. Her original captain, Lieutenant Catesby Appar Jones, had commanded the ironclad, CSS Virginia, originally called the Merrimack, during her famed battle with the USS Monitor. Here is a guy before the war who served in the old U.S. Navy and became known as an artillery expert. Well, when the South secedes, he joins, he joins the Virginia Navy, which turns, is, turns into the Confederate Navy. And David Dixon Porter, one of the admirals for the Union Navy, was once asked if he regretted seeing any officers leaving the old service to join the Confederacy. And his response was, I only regret seeing two of them. The rest of them were, and one of those two was Catesby Jones. They launched her uh, at Saffold, Georgia, uh, and they began their journey downstream to what was going to be their permanent home port. Just about when they reached the Florida line on the river, uh, the stern of the ship runs aground. Uh, it ruptures or breaks the, the rudder of the ship, and the rudder post or the stern post of the ship springs loose. It springs a bad leak. They have to man the pumps to keep her afloat all the way down to Chattahoochee. 
Now, once they got to Chattahoochee, they brought the crews uh, from the Confederate Navy Yard at Saffold down to Chattahoochee. They literally built a makeshift like coffer dam or a dry dock. They floated it under the ship, they pumped all the water out of it, and suddenly there was the whole stern of the ship high and dry where they could work on it. Lieutenant J.J. Guthrie was in command by May 1863, but a number of men who had served on the Virginia's crew during that epic battle were still on board the Chattahoochee. During this time, they entertained people uh, from the Chattahoochee and southwest Georgia and north Florida areas uh, on the boat or ship. They, uh, they invited the ladies of the communities on. One time they even invited the ladies of Columbus to come down and have a party with them on the uh, CSS Chattahoochee. Unfortunately, news of the invitation got to the newspaper before the invitation itself actually got to the ladies who were in charge. Um, this created a bit of a social faux pas and the ladies notified them we could never come after having read the invitation in the newspaper instead of having seen it personally. But we wish you, you know, great, great luck and fun with your party. Um, uh, they did gunnery practice here at, at Chattahoochee and people all through the community have and have found cannonballs. Being a veteran and being able to find these artifacts and return them to our community where other generations, younger generations, will be able to enjoy looking at them and learning the history and the story behind a cannonball. There are very few young folks today that even know what a cannon is, let alone a cannonball. They know what a artillery piece is modern day. They see them on television all the time. But you don't see too many nine inch guns like was on the back of the CSS Chattahoochee. The story of the Chattahoochee was one of war and tragedy, but life on the ship was not without its lighter moments. Well, life aboard the CSS Chattahoochee was a mixed bag. Um, you had this core uh, professional naval officers who were from very elite families of the South. Uh, they maintained extreme discipline. In fact, the officers could not appear on deck unless, you know, they were in proper uniform and every button was buttoned and everything was just perfect. Uh, the crew was a little bit of a different story. These guys, many of them had come from the Piney Woods of the Panhandle of Florida uh, and South Alabama. Uh, and their lives were very different than had been the lives of these, these professional naval officers. These were just, you know, kind of backcountry people. And uh, they had to train them not only to be sailors, but to be gunners and to follow military discipline and to dress appropriately and do all of these things. While the ship was uh, undergoing repairs at Chattahoochee uh, is when one of my favorite stories about the crew took place. Um, apparently the local guys didn't understand that military discipline required that they stay on the ship even when they weren't doing anything. And so constantly they would jump ship and go visit their families and the officers would have to lead parties out and bring them back. Um, in this one particular case, a, a local fella uh, jump ship and he went over into the swamps on the opposite side of the Apalachicola River and uh, he was out there, he met his wife out there and they had a campfire going and uh, the, the naval officer who was in pursuit of him came up on their camp and he wrote that he was about to approach them when he heard them talking to each other and uh, he stopped and listened and the guy said something to the effect of should give me another tater uh, and she said in response, baby, we ain't got nary another tater. And uh, the officer said he had to stop and cover his mouth and laugh before he could go in and apprehend the guy and take him back to the ship. That's a, a good uh, example of the difference between these, you know, southern aristocracy guys who were in the officers and the average everyday, you know, sailor aboard the Chattahoochee. The ship was tied to the Arsenal Wharf at Chattahoochee, Florida where news arrived that a Union boat party from the USS Port Royal had entered the lower Apalachicola River and captured the blockade runner fashion. The incident took place in Brushy Creek, not far upstream from today's Prospect Bluff historic sites, also called Fort Gadsden, and below the obstructions that the Confederates had placed in the river. Those obstructions were located at a place called the Narrows, where they were guarded by two batteries of heavy Confederate cannon. They were designed to stop Union warships from coming upstream beyond that point.
but their presence in the channel had prevented the Chattahoochee from reaching the open sea. Uh, Lieutenant Guthrie ordered steam brought up on the Chattahoochee. He decided he was going to go down and challenge the Union fleet. Now, now we, there were obstructions in the river, but he was determined he was just going to blast them out of his way uh, and get through and go to, go, to, go to battle. The men were tired of sitting in the Apalachicola River. They were tired of drills. They wanted to, uh, as they called it, you know, exchange some iron with the Union fleet at Apalachicola Bay. The ship left her home port at Chattahoochee on May 26, 1863. The vessel reached the sandbar at Blundstown that night, but the water proved too shallow for her to get across. The crew dropped anchor and Lieutenant Guthrie went further downstream in a small boat to gather intelligence and view the condition of the obstructions. Rain began to fall and this rain got heavier and heavier and heavier. Uh, from reading their accounts, we know today that a strong tropical storm or possibly even a rare May hurricane blew into the Apalachicola Bay region. Union ships offshore reported, you know, some of the severest weather they had ever encountered. Uh, two of those ships were driven aground or sunk by this storm. So the Union itself lost ships in the same storm. The Chattahoochee uh, began to raise steam to try to begin to make its way back up river to Chattahoochee. Uh, and there was an argument broke out down in the engine room. Uh, some of the officers reported they could hear the arguing. Uh, the engineer of the ship was sick with a fever, but he got up and ran to see what was going on. A gauge was not working, and before the chief engineer could intervene, the vessel was rocked by a massive explosion. Uh, we know now they had already heated the boilers, but the boilers didn't have water in them. And so when they opened it and sent water into those boilers, it superheated and the steam lines on the ship exploded. What happened next was just a tragedy that is difficult to describe. The, uh, the hot steam scalded men where they stood. Uh, some of the uh, accounts of this disaster report the men were literally scalded to the deck. They couldn't get them loose from the deck without pulling their skin off in the process. It's a very gruesome thing. Panic that the gunpowder in the ship's magazines might explode. Other crew members opened the plugs in the ship's hull and let the proud CSS Chattahoochee sink to the bottom of the storm-tossed Apalachicola. The horrible accident was described by CS Navy officers. No description, I'm told, could possibly be given of the scene on the deck of the Chattahoochee. Men running about, frantic with pain, leaving the impression of their bleeding feet and sometimes the entire flesh, the nails and all, remaining behind them. The dead and wounded were taken on shore, where they remained until the next afternoon, most of the time with a terrible storm raging. Sixteen men died uh, immediately. A couple of them drowned from leaping overboard. Uh, the others died you know, from the superheated steam that just scalded them to death where they stood. Um, another one, uh, young Mallory they called him, died a short time later. When the Virginia took on the monitor at Hampton Roads, this young officer, this young midshipman was on there, but he met his fate in the Apalachicola River where um, steam scalded him so severely that he was barely recognizable. They took him to Columbus, Georgia to a hospital and he died there. The wounded men spent more than 24 hours in miserable and muddy conditions before a Paddlewell steamboat finally reached them. They were taken first to a cheesy bluff where a makeshift hospital was set up at Jason Gregory's home. They were tended there by the doctors and ladies of Ochizi, as well as the ship's surgeon. Once stabilized as much as possible, they were carried on up to Columbus, Georgia. This thing left 16 men dead, uh, and they brought the bodies by steamboat here to Chattahoochee. Uh, the records just reflect that they buried them south of the gate of the arsenal, and of course this was the location of the Apalachicola Arsenal Complex, which was then being used as a training facility by the Confederates. They buried them here. The graves were lost, and uh, it took a long, long time before anyone knew where these men had been, bu been buried. But in the 1970s, they were digging a trench to put in some phone uh, lines, and they dug up human remains uh, in unmarked graves. These human remains turned out to be these men who had died in the explosion of the CSS Chattahoochee. So uh, a United Daughters of the Confederacy chapter from Lake Wales uh, you know, installed a monument here to mark their burial site. And each year, the city of Chattahoochee does, along with Chattahoochee Main Street, does a memorial service here.
knees up, arms, shoulder, arms, right, face, close ranks, march, forward, march. It's part of our history, of course, and Chattahoochee Main Street is uh, part of the National Main Street Organization. So that's part of our mission, is to preserve, to educate, uh, to um, just in, invite people to come in and learn about our different uh, sites that we have, our history, and it's very important to us. So that's, this is one of our historical sites that we have, so we want to let people know about that and memorialize uh, these gentlemen. I just want to mention today, we are at a crossroads. I think we are at the closest point of disaster in this nation that we have been in perhaps since the time that this tragedy occurred. We've got to find a way to come together. We've got to learn to recognize, respect, and love each other. And we can disagree on issues, but we can't disagree on the right of each and every one of us to exist, to be free, and to pursue our dreams. The Chattahoochee was later raised and towed to Columbus, where she was refitted and returned to service before the end of the war. Believe it or not, this terrible explosion that resulted in the sinking of the, of the ship was not the end of the CSS Chattahoochee. Uh, the shipyard crews came back down from Saffold, they, uh, they, they plugged the, the holes or the valve that had been opened that allowed her to sink. Uh, they pumped the water out and they refloated the ship. Confederate Navy raised her, brought her back to Columbus, and spent a lot of time trying to rebuild her. And so she's stuck right here in the river, right along the river banks. And she, you're talking about almost, almost two years of reconstructive surgery on, on this vessel to get it into operation. Uh, give you an idea of lack of resources, but also give you an idea of, of some of the problems they faced when constructing this ship. So, so there, there are all sorts of problems they face. Uh, so when we're talking about coming to April of 1865 and finally the war coming to Columbus itself, uh, the Chattahoochee has a minimal crew and when Wilson's men attack, sitting in the river where she is, she's unable to return fire. So she never, she's never firing at the enemy in real life. And so the decision is made to steam her downstream and blow her up to prevent her capture, to prevent the Union from being able to use her against the Confederacy. The stern section of the CSS Chattahoochee has been raised and can be seen today at the National Civil War Naval Museum in Columbus. One of the things to me that makes this museum a special place uh, is the CSS Jackson and the CSS Chattahoochee. They are both gems of the collection. And uh, to my knowledge, um, and, and Jeff may correct me, certainly, but there are six Civil War ships um, that have been recovered. We do have two of them. Um, I, I believe that uh, it's a little known fact. And certainly, the, the, as is true everywhere, the community doesn't know about the museum. Uh, we'd like to get that word out. Um, we have, though, one of the most beautiful artifacts, or two of the most beautiful artifacts you can think of in relation to the Civil War. The museum houses a remarkable collection of artifacts and displays that preserve the history of both the Union and Confederate navies. Although the two gems of the collection are both Confederate vessels and our original uh, pieces, we do strive very hard to look at both navies at, in as equal a format as we can. So as you go through the remainder of the museum, you'll see a full-size reproduction of the USS Hartford and the monitor and an additional timeline that touches on all the big naval events that occurred through the four years of the war and the CSS Albemarle as well which is another ironclad. So we try very hard to talk about not just Confederate and not just Union forces and sailors but the, the entire picture. 
Among the artifacts on display are items from the Chattahoochee, as well as the dress uniform of her first captain, Catesby Jones. One of the ship's 32-pounder broadside guns is on display outside of the museum. The Gregory House, where wounded men from the ship were treated on May 28, 1863, was moved across the Apalachicola River from Ochise Bluff to Toria State Park during the 1930s. The monument to the men killed in the terrible 1863 steam explosion on the ship can be seen in Chattahoochee, Florida. It stands on the west side of Main Street, just south of its intersection with US-90. To learn more about the CSS Chattahoochee, visit ExploreSouthernHistory.com or the National Civil War Naval Museum in Columbus, Georgia. I'm Rachel Conrad for 2 Egg TV. Oh, let us go home. Captain, the mate got drunk. Break up the people's tongue. Stole all the people's junk. Let us go home. Oh, let us go home. Oh, let us go home. She is my darling. Oh, let us go home. The captain, we came up town. Up comes the capers brown. Stole all the people's junk. Let us go home. Oh, let it go home.